On the agenda tonight, we're going back to the late 70s. We're going to be taking a look at Linda Ronstadt with a live performance of Blue Bayou. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So this request came in to take a look at Linda's voice from a pitch perspective, but we'll just look at it in general, even though I do have a video on Linda somewhere on the channel here that I've done previously and you can check that out independently if you want to. We've got the pitch monitoring software on screen, or we will have, so you can look at Linda's voice. It's just pitching her voice on the pitch graph. Just for reference, if you want to watch this video without all of this stuff on screen, just to enjoy the performance, there's a link in the description below. But let's jump into this, and then we'll jump into the analysis after. So bad, I got a worried mind. I'm so lonesome all the time. Since I left my baby behind, oh, I'm blue by you. Save a nickel, save a dime. Work until.
And there we have it. So I'm hoping that this is all going to be okay from a copyright perspective, just playing it from beginning to end. But the thing about Linda's voice, we can see on the pitch monitoring software how accurate she is. We will go through it and just highlight where she's so spot on pitch wise, but her vibrato that is so even as well. The first thing I want to point out is the microphone that Linda's using because you can see that for most of the performance she's right up into that microphone and this is really just something that varies from one performance to the next. As a vocalist if you've got a microphone that is a very sensitive or if you've got a PA that has got a lot of headroom available and it's really loud and it doesn't cause feedback it means that that mic can be really sensitive and you'll sometimes see singers not singing particularly loud or being close to the microphone but you still get a really nice sound from their vocal but in this case it looks like I mean, we are getting a great sound from the vocal but Linda is right up to that mic all the time even when she's leaning into her chest voice and goes an octave above into the chorus so it means that the microphone isn't necessarily that sensitive she's just got to manage that with her mic technique and have an appreciation of that of course she does she's the consummate professional so we'll jump into the analysis and see what we can see if this video has been blocked on copyrights then we'll probably just have to start the video here and click on that link in the description below to see the whole performance we're going to start it from the beginning and now listening to just the isolated vocal to get a real appreciation of linda's voice I feel so bad, I've got a worried mind I'm so lonesome all the time Since I left my baby behind Don't move by you And just jumping in here After that first verse you can see how we are down an F3 And the way that Linda delivers his vocal there's a lot of air in the sound It's obviously quite low in her range but that's the point it's really soft so she's not going to be, be able to belt down there anyway but she's not going to be leaning into the sound down there so the f3 i mean it does look like we hit the f sharp three there but the f3 is the note that she hit to begin with so already we've started in this place that dynamically is really low there's hardly any volume to it but also the way that she's delivering the vocal having that air in there and having nah, ah, it's almost just breathing out the notes which means that because of that delivery and where we are pitch wise she's leaving herself everywhere to go with this song because she's got loads of range that she can tap into but she can now lean into the sound later on in the song and it's going to be so dramatic because of where she's starting imagine if she started even in this kind of range going nah and lean into it that would be up in your face and it just would be a little bit offensive to be quite honest but it's leaving yourself nowhere to go from a dynamic perspective so we're starting out i think also because it's low in linda's range she's not gonna be able to do that i can do that because i'm a guy so by starting it this way it just means that the journey that we're all about to go on and join linda on has got so many potential turns and avenues that we can go down which is exactly what you want but let's just take it back because have a look at linda's voice i mean first of all we'll just have a little look at the pitch because i mean she is dead on pretty much all the time and you'll see notes that are slightly sharp and slightly flat but i mean this is pitch perfect when we're talking about it from a perspective of listening to it and not looking at it so let's just move it on a little bit you'll notice this vibrato as well that she always has this wobble of vibrato in there here g sharp three spot on straight up to the a sharp three spot on and then a slightly wider vibrato so she's got that air in the sound but that wobble of vibrato in there as well we'll have another listen I feel so bad I got a worried mind I'm so lonesome all the time 
Since I left my baby behind, don't look by you. So with that vibrato, it's almost in there consistently throughout the vocal phrase. So we've got this na, and this kind of that wobble is always ah. It's always kind of wanting to go in there. Let's uh, resume it and get into more of the performance. Save a nickel, save a dime. Work until the sun don't shine Looking forward to happier times on by you And just having a look here again, spot on pitch wise And of course with this song, we've got a distinct melody We've got these slides that happen as well And by the way a lot of you will know the Roy Orbison, the original that was released, I think, in 1963. But this song, I think, is just Linda's song. She's very much known for it, and it did very well for her. It did well for Roy as well previously, but I think Roy recorded this, uh, what is it, 14, 13, 14, maybe 15 years. This was 1977. Trying to do some quick maths. Originally, it was released in 1963. That's 14 years, so 14 years between them, but both of them hits in their own right. Just quickly, I'm going to point out, for the people that do have a little bit of trouble following the vocal line that we get on the screen on the right-hand side, you hear a little bit of keyboard being played, and if you look out for that, it just goes meh, like that. Look out for that line on the screen, because then hopefully you get an understanding of what's happening and how the voice is plotted on the pitch graph. Save and dance, work until the sun don't shine. And there it is. So you see this little line here. You might have heard just that keyboard, but taking it back, and listen out for it again, and I'm going to let it play on after that. And here, great vibrato at the end, again over that F sharp 4. But here's the drama that has all been set up by that first vocal being airy and not really a connected sound vocal chords wise. So when we get into this chorus, we've got the double whammy of just a full vocal cord connection leaning into the sound in chest voice. There's no air in this sound anymore. And when I say double whammy, look at the pitch monitor because as we go back, you can see that we've been an octave below this. So if you jump up an octave from a verse to a chorus, it is going to be full of drama because as you ascend in pitch, that's going to make it just stand out so much more. You've got to first of all have the ability as a vocalist to take your verse into a chorus that's an octave above because that is mightily difficult to achieve. The other thing to point out, I don't know whether you would have noticed this, but the way that she descends from the chorus and just taking it back, the high note in the chorus, I think we got up to the C sharp five. Let me just check this. Yeah, so we've got this C sharp five at the top of our pitch graph here. I mean, Accuracy wise, look at the previous C5 that we hit, or the C sharp 5, we're absolutely dead on. I mean, if we were to zoom into it, it would be slightly sharp, but I mean, this is as accurate as you're going to get. But back to my point of whether you notice the way that Linda, as she descends, starts to get back into the airy sound of the verse. So it's almost like you've got this space that is very light and airy, and then in the chorus, we're the octave above, but we are full on. Let's have a listen to part of the chorus and listen to the way that she starts to put more air in the sound as she descends. Sleepy eyes, how happy I'd be. 
So even there to the A sharp four, where we had this, we still got all that air in there, which is linking it back to the verse. It's exactly what you want to do to almost lay that foundation of where we're going next. Because sometimes if you're belting out, you go, na, 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 and then you go into something really soft. It just seems really stupid. Um, and dynamically, it doesn't work. You just get to appreciate the performance because of the amount of care and attention and dynamic appreciation the vocalist has of their performance overall. And a lot of vocalists will just do this naturally because it feels right in order to just rather than suddenly jump into something that is dramatic, which when you're going from the verse into the chorus, you want that. Whereas you don't want to go into something that's dynamically a lot lower and less offensive. And especially with the backing, if you had the backing playing at the same time, you'll hear how dynamically we change back down. So you want the vocal to just match the instruments that are being played in the background. And that's exactly what Linda's doing here with her voice. Just to point out before we get into the next verse that we've got the B3 down here. And that means we've gone over an octave now lower from where we started or the high note of our chorus. Again, a great thing to look at if you are analyzing your own voice, trying to get the consistency to your vibrato, because the great singers, when they apply vibrato, it is always like this. It will vary pitch wise as to how wide the vibrato is, but the frequency, the distance between the lines is always the same. So that when you slow it down, you get that, you get that kind of pulsing to it. And you can really start to learn vibrato by doing that, by going and going to the semitone below, because that's a great place to start. So if I take this back and I've done this before, but we'll listen to it in slow motion. And hopefully you can hear that just those pulses of pitch that are going down. And she's not quite as dramatic as going all the way down. But you can still do that and it'll sound really similar. So it's a great way to learn to just speed up going down a semitone. So we'll just jump into the last chorus to apply now what we've learned about this vocal listening out for that decrease in pitch, but with the decrease in pitch, the lighter vocal sound and bringing more air into it as well. Let's have a listen. <laughs> We did have a slightly more connected sound there on the C sharp four. And you can tell straight away that she's just leaning into that a little bit more and she actually joins that up. So that uh, going up to that G sharp four, she actually connects it. So we get that glissando from the C sharp four. And again, up here, we start to get really connected with the sound. And then more towards the breath as we then come back down to this B3. Just to listen to this final vocal phrase because we have this really cool flip into head voice. But let's have a look. And there we have it. So this little flip that she allows to happen, she's now accessing the notes that we had earlier on or you know, relatively similar notes because I think before we had the C sharp five. Let me just see where we go with this. 
my dreams come true. I'm blue by you. And she is actually leaning into that quite a lot on the A sharp four, and then we get the D sharp five. So when I said that we were in that similar range that she was hitting in chest voice earlier, the C sharp five, we can see that we're just a tone away from that. So two semitones. Having this vibrato in there as well, just holding the note, same principle applies, keeping it really nice and even, but this is a released head voice. So it means that it's a different vocal register. If Linda was hitting this in chest voice, she would be belting that out. And because it is such a high note, she was belting out the C sharp five. But here, you can just hear the way that she allows it to flip up there, very much like a yodel. I mean, that's all a yodel is, allowing that break to happen and just keeping those vocal cords together. <laughs> The reason that I say that this is head voice and not falsetto is because with falsetto, there's a definite break of the vocal cords where they come apart. Whereas here, you can hear that it flips. It doesn't break. It isn't a total break of the sound altogether. Even on the pitch monitoring software, you can see where that little break happens pitch wise going up into the D sharp five. There hasn't been any proper, you know, full disconnection of the vocal cords. They've just been allowed to flip instantly into that head voice. But a great performance here from Linda and the band as a whole. Just a great pedal steel guitar solo in there as well. Dynamically, the band are just totally on it. And Linda really is using her voice like an instrument, just replicating everything that's going on behind her with the band. Anyway, thank you guys for requesting this video for me to take a look at. Keep those suggestions coming in the comment section below. As always, let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!